So in this video, we're going to do a quick introduction to this, essentially a 3D printed um, joystick box that houses one of these um, retro emulator units f built off of a Raspberry Pi. And so I'm going to go quickly through the printing process, the assembly, and then the electronics to kind of give you just an overview of how this is put together. Really not a difficult project, um, but the print time um, is substantial just because it's a large you know, box essentially with four sides. So I'll go ahead and start with the files I utilize for the 3D print and then we'll take it from there. All right, so here's the base model for the, uh, the uh, player one uh, bottom part of the box here. You can see the standoffs uh, where the Raspberry Pi gets inserted inside. Um, I did modify this one. I took, there was another additional hole in the front, but I took that out because I didn't really have a use for it. I wanted to have it a clean front but didn't have to do a whole lot of modifications outside of that for this. Uh, it'll work just fine. Um, in the future, I may do some things where maybe I offset the Raspberry Pi so that I'm not having to plug anything here and I can have it all internal, but that'll be for a future date. Um, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the top. All right, so here we have the top, and you can see it It does have a little, um, uh, a little recess cavity for the joystick plate. And then you have your six arcade buttons, and then your uh, you know start select uh, player one coin buttons. Um, didn't have to do anything there. Those, are, those worked out perfect and it uh, printed really well. I do recommend printing this a little bit thicker infill than normal just because you're going to have your, your hand and some weight on there. Um, and I've seen some gaming sessions get pretty crazy, so as I'm sure you guys have. So I'd, I'd print this a little bit thicker than your standard 20% uh, infill. I will go ahead and post the bottom of the video description a link to the original source files on Thingiverse um, the author did a great job putting this together. He also provides the um, Fusion 360 files, so if you want to modify them, you can. Um, that's what I had to do because my buttons were a different size than uh, what they came configured as. And just for reference, my uh, arcade buttons are 30 millimeter, and the um, player one coin or start select buttons are 24 millimeter. So that's what I had laying around. That's what I decided to use. So I tweaked it for my own use. You guys can do the same. And do note that the player one and player two boxes and lids are different. So make sure you don't mess that up while you're printing things out. And in regards to materials, um, I'm using a combination of PLA and PETG um, just because that's what I have laying around. Uh, the lids are PETG and the boxes are PLA. So yeah, they both worked out really well. And let's take a look. And here we have the completed player one box. Um, the picture doesn't look that great. It's it's the glare from the light makes it look really rough, but it's actually a very very smooth print, which you'll see in in further down in the video. So uh, trust me, it turned out really well, and you'll see that here in a bit. And now let's check out the actual printing process of the Player Two box. I just really like the noise it makes when it does a fast honeycomb and fill. All right, and there's the two-player enclosure. So the, the base of it, and you'll notice there's no holes anywhere. There's just an output here for the USB cable because all that goes in here is the encoder uh, that hooks, that connects the, the buttons to the um, you know USB. So that turned out really nice. It's a really nice print. And I'm going to print the top. So I'm doing a little bit higher end fill than I normally do. This is 30% fast honeycomb because... You know, you'll be pressing buttons and utilizing a joystick on top of the lid. So I want it as I want it to be pretty firm without it being completely solid. So going 30% infill should work out pretty nicely. It's gonna take a while to print. It finished. It looks great, but I, I cut it a little bit too close, as you can see there. I actually ran out of filament during the print, but it looks like it got to the very very end because. The final layers are finished and there's no honeycomb showing. So I'm hoping that it only missed like one or two layers at the very, very bottom, which won't even matter. So yeah, uh, lucked out on that one. That could have been pretty bad. So I'm glad I didn't screw that print up because it was a good five hours. Now it's time to start putting this thing together. All right, so now that we have one of the uh, the Player One box fully printed out, both the bottom and the top, I'll kind of go over the components that, that go inside of it. This is your standard RetroPie setup, essentially, um, except that we're using, uh, you know, arcade buttons versus a USB um, gamepad. 
So there's little standoffs, um, both for the Raspberry Pi B Plus inside here, and you can see it snaps in perfectly. All the ports line up as they should. Um, there's some standoffs also for the um, the button, the USB converter. Goes right inside there, and they'll, I'll, I'll screw those down once I'm ready to start wiring things up. Um, I took out the hole in the front because I didn't really want another button here, but I did keep one here. I'm actually going to utilize one of these um, 30 millimeter plugs because I'm going to put one of these LED backlit power switches, uh, momentary switches in it that I'll program to where I can do a quick shutdown. Um, I'll, I'll put a script in the Pi to where I can press this and it will automatically shut the Pi down so there's not any power issues and whatnot um, or corruption with the SD card. And then here we have our standard kit. Um, Again, I do. This is the Player One kit. This is basically uh, for Player One. Setup's the same, but I do have um, the Player Two box ready to go. Player Two box will not have the Pi in it. It'll be just basically a USB uh, gamepad, essentially, is what this will be. It'll, it'll, but it will interface directly with this Pi uh, via one of the USB ports here. So um, how I have it set up right now is I have some 24 millimeter. Um, buttons that are going to go is kind of like your coin and player one buttons or menu buttons, whatever you want to do. And then I have six of your standard um, arcade buttons that will go um, th through here. But that's the basic setup. I'm going to go ahead and start putting things together. And then we'll work on throwing my image in the pie and see how it does. All right, so we've gone ahead and got everything printed out. Um, I did lay in a few uh, the, the primary buttons for the player one case. Uh, you can see the player two um, is a little bit different. Basically, there this uh, straight edge is player one, this rounded edge is player two, and I also have a you know a matching red uh, joystick here to go into player two. Uh, again, print quality is really good with this Amazon Basics filament, no complaints. Turned out pretty good. And just to give you an idea what the inside looks like here of the actual case. Um, on the file, I modified. I, I didn't want a button in the front, so I modified that to to not be there. Um, I have a plug-in right here. I may put uh, another button that I have a spare uh, in this location for maybe like a menu selection. But if I don't, I just have to plug in there. So we'll figure that out as we go. And then obviously you have your your little uh, indentations here in the front and back, which is how the case uh, snaps in. So you can see the that that raised edge that snaps in to the, the top of the lid here. And then you have your standoffs um, for your Raspberry Pi, um, and along here your cutouts, and then also um, for the USB microcontroller that controls the, you know, the helps you tie in all the buttons um, to then a USB cord, which then plugs into the Pi. So basically, how this works, you angle it in here. Uh, you're going to stick in the USB and and networking uh, Ethernet jack first. Once those are in, and this this is a bit tricky. Took me a few tries the first time to get this all the way. There we go. And then it snaps in and those sit nice and flush. As do those. Um, again, we will secure down with using some screws uh, when we're completed here. And then the USB encoder does the same. We'll secure that down. And then the only other thing that was kind of a bummer is there's, there's no, the USB uh, ports are totally um, separate from like the, the the pins here, so you can't. There's no way to interface, you know, these internally. So you do have to use. I'm using a right angle uh, USB extender. So I'm basically gonna plug it in right here, and then there's this little notch in the top of the case where I'll bring it through. And so basically, what's gonna happen is is uh, once I finish wiring the buttons to this encoder here, I'll run a USB cable from this. Uh, directly to here, which will then interface with the Pi. And then the second player uh, box, there's no Pi. Uh, it's only the USB encoder is what goes in this one. And so you'll just run a USB cable from this uh, directly to the side of the Pi right here, and that plugs in your two-player you know, control set. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get these wired up. Uh, these are really straightforward. Uh, nothing too complicated here. There is a little wiring harness uh, for the uh, the joystick as well. It goes right through here, but these are really, really easy. Just the little push pins, um, pretty standard. So I'll get that set up and then come back and we'll give it a test run. And I will go ahead and put uh, links to purchase all the parts um, in addition to the STL files 
uh, to build one of these. Not a whole lot goes into it, but I'll, I'll, I'll list those so you guys can grab those easily. And uh, you do just use some basic socket head, uh, some M4 socket head uh, cap screws. And I'm just using some small nuts to tie those in. So really simple. And then the buttons obviously um, are just pushed through and they have these, these pressurized um, wings right here that as you push them, they just kind of lock down. So install, once it's printed, the install is fairly easy. Um, now comes the wiring. All right, so this is the, we'll start with the player two uh, lid and wiring. So essentially, um, again, pretty straightforward. There's just two jumpers for each button. It doesn't even matter which, uh, which lead you put on it. Uh, but those tie into the uh, USB converter here. It doesn't matter what order you put these in because when you first launch uh, RetroPie, you basically assign each button to a certain action. So it doesn't matter the order uh, that they're in there. Uh, the joystick itself is using a five pin connector going directly to here. So pretty straightforward there. And then we have this USB cable, which is tied into this uh, four pin connector down here at the bottom um, of this board. And basically I ran it underneath the controller to make it nice and snug and then threw a little notch in the top. And so again, uh, this will plug directly into the player one unit uh, into the RetroPie. So that's basically all you have to do for the player two one, super easy, no, other, no additional buttons. Um, and you can, you know, pop the lid on. Nice snap. And as you can see, it sits nice and flush. So that one, player two is actually done because there's nothing else to, to work with. And then here's the player one set up. Um, you can see a, a few more wires involved here. Um, now I will mention also I utilized these um, 440 by quarter inch long screws to uh, <laughs> to tie down both the, the Pi um, and the USB controller. I tried using M, M3 uh, M3 socket head cap screws because I have tons of those for my computer stuff, but they actually um, on this on this uh, USB controller here, it the holes were way too small and it's harder to crack the PCB. So I went with these instead and they worked fine, um, no issues there. Now as far as the wiring is concerned uh, with this one, again same setup as far as the joystick and the buttons. Um, I do have this extra side button that I'll I'll tie to some random menu function. Uh, maybe I'll utilize it for like a a load state you know, uh, quick save, something like that. Don't know yet. But um, this comes off and then ties directly into that, that USB cable that comes back around to the Pi. And then the only thing I still have to do for this one as far as wiring is concerned is I'm going to put one of these um, momentary LED buttons, uh, power buttons. I'm probably going to bore a hole right here in the side of the case and put it in here on the side and then wire it into the, the pins on the Pi. And basically it's going to operate the same way it does on this uh, on this little one I made here um, in my Nest Pi. Uh, gaming system using a Pi Zero. Basically, uh, by t hitting that button, I have a script in, in the Pi that basically turns it on. Uh, LED illuminates inside there, you know, powers needed on. And then when you're done playing, you can go through the normal shutdown operation in the menu, or you can hit this and it will do a safe shutdown script um, and not, you know, corrupt your SD card and whatnot. So um, I'm going to put the same, same one I did here, same script uh, on the side. And then as far as like the hardware, and the wiring were done, and then it's just popping in my uh, RetroPie image on the bottom of the pie here. So I'll go ahead and get this wired, and then boot it up and show it in its glory. All right, so here we have our controller unit here. Um, this is player one, so it has the Raspberry Pi inside of it with the RetroPie um, operating system installed. And basically, uh, we have the, you know, as we showed before, the USB connection, um, the controller that goes to all the buttons is internal and goes to this port here. I've already pre-configured this to work with the, you know, the, jo the joystick. Um, had to do a few, few things there, but basically for setup, all we're gonna do is plug in the HDMI to the screen here or your television, and then plug in this micro USB um, connector for power. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Power, I'm gonna go ahead and power the unit on. I have this configured right now, um, essentially A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder, start, select, and then this is a hotkey for uh, various menu functions. Uh, and menu navigation is the exact same as anything else. So um, you know, I can go over here to the 
Got the arcade set up. Scroll through my games. Arrow Fighters, that's a fun one. It essentially works uh, with the arcade setup. You essentially have, with your start and select, you have your coin and player one buttons. So insert coin. So I have three credits now. Then I hit start for start player one. And oops, drop the bomb. I mean that. So good stuff there. And to go back, we're going to hit select start. And that basically takes us back to the menu. And then we're going to go back one more step here. And if you want to add a second player, it's really easy. We have the second player unit that does not have the Raspberry Pi. All it has is the USB controller um, built in. So you just basically are going to plug this into one of the empty USB ports. It doesn't matter which one. And now I have a two-player setup. And so now this one works as a second player. So player one, player two. Um, of course, you still can use... Um, along with this, normal wired controllers, just plug in the USB, um, or even wireless controllers, whether it be Bluetooth or USB wireless. So, pretty cool unit because it's all self-contained. Uh, the primary controller and the gaming system is all in this little box. And just plug it into a TV, and you got hours of gaming for you and your kids. So, hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, hit me up with any questions.